quickly, let me take you down memory lane. It was back in 2017 that the Denver Nuggets selected Donovan Mitchell with the 13th overall pick and immediately traded him to the Jazz, which we'll get into in just a second. But fast forward three years, he's gone on to win individual slam dunk competitions, second in the Rookie of the Year voting, and more importantly, he's now become a leader of a Western Conference contender. This is just a guy who's averaging 23 points and a gentle reminder, I'm going to say it again, only three years in the league. But how big is that ceiling for the guy that they call Spider? Hello there, fans of Sky Sports Heat Check, the greatest show on terrestrial television. It's your boy Yanni, aka the man with the features. And this morning, I woke up and I thought, how good can Donovan Mitchell be? So I did some digging. And well, to get to any sort of conclusion, we'd have to start at the beginning of this man's short yet rather impressive career. He comes into the league as the 13th pick in the 2017 NBA draft, selected by the Denver Nuggets, who must be absolutely fuming, by the way, as they traded him away for not much. Mitchell then goes on to have an incredible rookie year. He became the lead scorer straight away, took the Jazz on a playoff run that was highlighted by dropping 38 points in a game six that sent the OKC Thunder out of the first round. So he's done all of this in his rookie year whilst averaging over 20 points per game, which is quite a bit more than John Morant is doing this year, and he's definitely going to win rookie of the year. Here's the incredible thing about Mitchell. He's improved by metrics and the eye test every year he's been in the league. His usage rates go up, his efficiency goes up, his playmaking improves, and so does his shot selection. Having a high volume scorer like Mitchell is a valuable part of winning a championship, and there's a reason they finish top five in the Western Conference every year he's been in the league. Now let's take a look at the present day Donovan Mitchell. He's an all-star for the first time in his career. His numbers, as we mentioned earlier, have improved and he's absolutely the primary scorer for a playoff bound jazz team. We are, however, here to take a look at his ceiling. Can he ever be MVP or the reason that a team wins a championship? Well, that's down to two things. For Donovan Mitchell, it's defense and free throws. You'll be hard pressed to find truly dominant NBA level stars who weren't intimidating or wildly efficient defenders. Mitchell was drafted originally for his defense, but this part of his game hasn't translated that well to the NBA. And of course, there's free throws. And to be that guy, you have to get to the line whenever you can. And Mitchell at the moment does not. To take it back to the positive, he's the face of an NBA franchise who's recently become the third fastest active NBA player to 5,000 points right behind LeBron and KD. And even though this video started off asking about his ceiling, based on how he's grown so far, I can absolutely tell you that his floor is a perennial NBA all-star and all he has to do is hash a few things out. Look, undoubtedly Donovan Mitchell is an incredible talent. There's no doubt about that right there. But BJ, I come to you because how do we elevate Donovan Mitchell now in Utah? How does he now take his game so that he can accomplish the ultimate goal, a championship? Well, the thing that's been most impressive about Donovan Mitchell is that since he's come into this league, in particular in the Western Conference, you know, he's come in and he's played very well and a very high level. And Donovan Mitchell is doing this all in the Western Conference. I can't emphasize that enough for him to come in as a young player, figure that out and play at this level. says something about him. So I love what he's doing. What is his ceiling? I think his ceiling, we don't know his ceiling right now because we don't know where he's going to, you know, finish, how he's going to really, what this finished product is really going to look like. So I'm going to continue to watch him. I'm going to continue to watch his game grow. This year he was an all-star, and I expect him to continue to figure out and inch closer and closer to that NBA championship because he is a winner on and off the court. Mo, so many people have likened his game to D-Wade, that slasher mentality, that quick first step, just the heart for the game more than anything else. But the important question there was, what is his ceiling? I hear the D-Wade comparisons. I really do. I've been hearing them for a long time now. But what you got to remember about D-Wade is he didn't win a championship until Shaq joined him. And then he didn't win another one until LeBron joined him. And there's no one on that Utah Jazz roster that is of that caliber. And, you know, you're looking at this Jazz team, the way it's built with Mike Conley there. I don't think that's an ideal fit. We also have Rudy Gobert, who's, you know, defense player of the year candidate every year. But... Do you really want to lock him at his age into an even longer term deal with some astronomical figures if you look at the protections of the max super max contract that they will have to offer him will be? The thing with Donovan Mitchell is I feel like he'll be a victim to coming into the league when there's a time when there's a plethora of talent. I mean, you're looking at the Western Conference. We were just talking about Devin Booker. We always talk about Luka Doncic. You're talking about guys like Giannis, who's the same age. You're talking about guys like Jason Tatum. There's so many good young players. Now, I don't know if there will be a season where Donovan can stand out and be the clear best player in the NBA, but no doubt that he's going to be an all-star for many years to come. 
Look, we've seen sometimes in the NBA history where sometimes it's not just the best player has to be on the best team. There can be blips. I think about Detroit Pistons. I think about the Dallas Mavericks. So I'll ask you, Ryan, can Donovan Mitchell be the best player on a championship winning team? Definitely. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you'd say, you know, a player's stats is inflated because he's on a bad team. Donovan Mitchell is on a top five team in the Western Conference. Um, He's got a great anchor behind him in Rudy Gobert. Um, the only thing is, he's the lone scorer. You know, the next scorer, probably next to him, would be Ingles. Like, I believe... Bogdanovich. Oh, Bogdanovich. But he's hurt, right? Yeah, he, yeah. So, mm. exactly. So, Ingles right now. And it's, you can't really do too much with that, especially, like, going into the playoffs with all that firepower that's in the West. So, I feel like he could definitely be um, a franchise player on a championship winning team. Um, he just needs a good Batman. And right now he doesn't really have that, especially on the offensive end. The other thing is as well about Utah, you know, I, I don't know Donovan personally enough to make a call on this, but from some players that I have spoken to, they've told me that when they go to games on the road, Utah is the worst place they go and play. They hate going to play games in Utah because it's so boring as a city. And we all know Donovan <laughs> likes to get lit. You know, he's, he's a young superstar in this league. And if you're a young superstar, oh you know, God. when he becomes a free agent and there's a New York and there's a Brooklyn and a Miami and a LA and all these other cities on the table, there's a Houston or whoever, whoever's got cap space at that time, it's going to be pretty hard for Utah to convince him to stay there unless they make some major moves to get him better support. Because like Ryan was saying, you know, who's helping him with that scoring load? Mo, so what, are you really saying, what, are you, what are you really saying? What are you really saying, Mo? Thank you, BJ. What are you, thank you. What are you really Utah's saying here? Popping, bro. You know? Utah's not popping, bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, I know Ellis, the producer, he's a big jazz fan, but Utah is not lit. Especially when you're a young superstar coming up in this world. you got the world at your feet and you, you try to stay in Utah. You try to chill in Salt Lake City. Now, that's, that's not for me. and I, I don't know if it's going to be for Donovan Mitchell when he hits free agency. Oh, but would that stop no. him from what? being a franchise player? Oof. What, in terms of being a franchise, face for a franchise for another on, team? On, yeah, not on a championship. Yeah, yeah what, what, I'm saying is, what I'm saying is to get that championship, it'll probably be elsewhere other than Utah. Oh, but he still has the potential out. to be... Oh, he's got, he's got tons of potential. Like you already said in a feature, though, okay. he definitely needs to get to the line more. He needs to be more aggressive on offense. And his defense is nothing near the level that we thought he would bring when he got to the league. And I think some of that is because he's having to carry the scoring load so much that it's impossible to go all out on offense and defense at the same time if the rest of your team are really in a great. boring city. Yeah, exactly, bro. What's, what's the motivation, man? Why are you going to celebrate your big win? You, you win a big game, what are you doing to celebrate? I don't know what there is to do there. Utah find themselves currently <laughs> stiff out in the West, so it's going to be interesting to see how this sort of thing plays out. I but think Ryan has a hot take here. Ryan has a hot take here. Ryan has a hot take. He has a hot take. I'm telling you. <laughs>